Oh, it was the huh? burnt jazz. What you have to? Like it's burnt, but not. It's like, it's like a light red. Let me see the juice. I want to I got the juice. Yes, you do. I'll just put a lot of stuff. Yeah, What's up, Lily? Hey. How's it going? I'm having the time of my life. Whoa. Oh, snap. Well, guys, I don't have a booster. Croy, we're over by Point Udall. Oh my god! Ah! Come back to the beach of St. Croix. Ah! Get ah! all those chickens. Best part about staying in St. Croix? Being literally ah! on the edge ah! of the beach. St. Croix is an island in the Caribbean Sea and a county and constituent district of the United States Virgin Islands, an unincorporated territory of the United States. Well, I can tell you from personal experience that it is so much more than that. Welcome to the island of St. Croix located in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Pretty beautiful, huh? You're probably asking yourself, what in the world is a kid like me doing in a place like this? Allow me to introduce myself. Hi, my name is Shelby. I'm an 18-year-old aspiring documentary filmmaker. Shelby, what's all this, like, blue fuzz in the picture? Because this is too bright. Yeah, I'm a, should I stop recording? Yep. Struggles of video. I live in a small town in Texas known as Roy City. Hold on a second now. This person's truck literally has a sticker that says yee yee on the back. Every three years, my audio video teacher, Mr. Vaughn, takes a select handful of students to the U.S. Virgin Islands for a week. None of them quite as crazy as this year's. Well, it's finally hit. Teenagers starting to get on each other's nerves. I walked away for a few minutes down here to the beach. All the teachers think I'm on a vacation, but I'm really not. The purpose of the trip is simple. Find and create stories to tell from around the island. But I have to admit, the stories that I found aren't just any regular island stories. And I'm not just any regular high school film. You see, I'm hitting the road on a mission to get a taste of everything that St. Croix has to offer. And to take you along for the ride. I'm Shelby Dorsho, and this is the St. Croix Chronicles. I love seeing people's reactions for the first time when I show them pictures and videos of St. Croix, but I have to admit, it doesn't even compare to its true beauty. The history of the island dates all the way back to 1493, when Christopher Columbus visited it on his second voyage to the New World. Columbus named the island Santa Cruz St. Croix, which means Holy Cross. The island was colonized in 1643 by the English and the Dutch, and it wasn't until 1917 that St. Croix, along with the islands of St. John and St. Thomas, were purchased by the United States. And believe it or not, St. Croix is only 22.7 miles long and just 8 miles wide, but in that stretch is a variety of different towns, landmarks, and just over 50,000 people. Travel to the North Shore part of the island, to the town of Christiansted. There you'll find an artist who's been designing and creating original jewelry pieces for over 40 years. Meet Brian Bishop, the owner of Crucian Gold Jewelry and creator of one of the most well-known crafts among the island goers. 
but what's the story behind these handcrafted creations? I'm born and raised in St. Croix, and I have to give a lot of credit to my dad, who always had a, a studio or a workshop full of tools, power tools, hand tools. Um, I learned so much about tools, even just knowing the name of what a tool is. Uh, you don't realize um, always how valuable just that can be. My father started making jewelry as a hobby in, his, in high school using simple copper wire and telephone wire as he could get a hold of it. And he would make things to give friends at school and whatnot. When you think of jewelry manufacturing, you probably think of it as a form of microengineering in which precious metals are conformed by a gas torch. But that's not quite the case for Crucian Gold. As he grew up sailing and diving in the waters of St. Croix, Brian actually started tying sail knots and scrap metals as a hobby. My early pieces were influenced by the fact that I didn't know how to solder. I went to uh, some effort to avoid using conventional jewelry making techniques. Uh, uh, the knot tying, for example. The, the little twist in the butterfly before you go to the feelers uh, was how the whole thing was held together. So what I'm making here today is um, going to be one of our simple designs, uh, simply yet beautiful. This is a, a jig that we, we hand make to our needs. Um, my father first made a flower and then a butterfly using this technique in 1972, just using a few nails sticking out of a table. The construction process is the stage in which pieces end up looking quite, well, ugly before they become beautiful. The jewelry is acid washed and hopes to create a less blackened appearance. Next, the pieces go into a hammering stage to either introduce a hammered look or change the piece's shape. Finally, the jewelry is sanded and polished to remove any leftover scratches, nicks, and dents, as well as leave behind their signature shiny appearance. When I was a little boy, I grew up in and out of the workshop from age about eight. And we're still making these things the same way we did 40 years ago. But I was surprised to learn that Brian actually bought the home he has now from, believe it or not, just a box. The late 70s, and going back to another family member, um, my late brother Don made me, he actually made two of these little teak uh, carrying showcases. When you open it up, it was a full-blown jewelry store all squeezed into this little tiny box, if you can believe that, <laughs> down to the calculator and the, <laughs> the cash register, everything. And, um, and um, I literally bought my house uh, with, with this box. Um, so this box is a very big, big part of Crucian Gold. For many, many, many people still today remember me from the box before I even had a store. By the looks of it, you'd never even guess that all of this started from just a kid with a simple hobby. From bracelets to necklaces to everything in between, it's safe to say that these artisan-produced creations have struck gold. Now when it comes to some of the adventurous and exciting things to do in St. Croix, there's three main things I'd like to suggest. Number one, food. I'm here at Cheeseburgers in Paradise in the eastern part of Christensen to try some burgers that are known for being quick, delicious, and of course, filling. Now I know what you're thinking. Why eat a cheeseburger in St. Croix? I mean, it's the Virgin Islands for crying out loud. Well, this cheeseburger shack is actually a hidden gem. It's known for having the best cheeseburgers on the entire island. And I mean, who doesn't love a good burger? Here, now I'm from Texas, all right? So I have a lot of expectation when it comes to this burger. Now that is a good burger. Number two, fun. Where are we headed out, y'all? Buck Island. We're going to Buck Island today. Buck Island is a small, uninhabited island about 1.5 miles north of the northeast coast of St. Croix. Step, take our first step on Buck And the locals say it's the best site in all of St. Croix for deep sea snorkeling. And the Turtle Beach on the western edge of the island has even been voted one of the world's most beautiful beaches by National Geographic. And number three, culture. If I had to choose one thing that I'd call the secret treasure of St. Croix, it'd be the Estate Wim Sugar Mill. 
aka the oldest living sugar plantation on the island. A trip there features a tour of the mill and even a special performance of a song that originated in St. Croix. Fly mangoes, dog on your name. Fly mangoes, oh what a shame. He went into Miss Mary kitchen, eat up one of a big fat chicken, hide it under the kitchen table. Fly mangoes. Now this type of singing was done in a sugarcane field. So I hope we have shared our history with you. Tucked into the tropical rainforest on the western side of St. Croix, you'll find a small bar known as the Domino Club, one of the most well-known island establishments that's been around for over 40 years. Well, the Domino, the Domino Club, it was a few friends just used to come and hang out. Why is the owners them, you know, building or doing whatever work? They all would have a cooler, you know, have drinks, and eventually they just start serving out of the coolers, selling the drinks. But the real hidden gem of this establishment is actually found behind the building. You see, at this bar, the people aren't the only ones doing the drinking. The Domino Club is home to the world famous beer drinking pigs. So what we do now, we serve our pigs non-alcohol beers, which is the Odos. It's only 0.5%, very, very little that they do get out of the beers. But when they did start it, they used to have real alcohol. Pigs used to get drunk. Honestly, pigs would eat and drink anything. It was just a fun thing when he started with a beer and we just continue with the beers, but over the years they have changed and made it not alcoholic for the pigs, you know, health, health wise. But how does someone just discover that these pigs enjoy drinking beer? Well, it dates all the way back to the 1970s. The owners of the Domino Club started off as farmers. They had many pigs and decided to downsize on the numbers. They had sold almost all of them except for two, Miss Piggy and Buster Pig. One day, a visitor walked past Buster with a beer in his hand, and Buster helps himself. Combine the pigs with the bar atmosphere, and you have the beer-drinking pigs of the Domino Club, voted the best tourist attraction on the Virgin Islands. Every day, honestly, we go through couple hundred different tourists. As soon as folks get on island, this is like one of the things that they must do. And she's right. People come from all around the world just to stop by for happy hour and buy the pigs around. But just remember to be careful if you ever find yourself face first to one of these furry, not so little guys. <laughs> Our next stop is, sadly, the International Airport. There's this little saying about St. Croix. Once you get there, you never really want to leave. Where are we going, Lindsay? Home. We're going home. St. Croix adventures are over. Yeah, it's never over until it's actually over, okay? It's over, Sebastian. <laughs> When I left for this trip, I never really anticipated to just learn as much as I did. You know, when I got on the island, I didn't know what stories were out there. I didn't know who I was going to meet, what was going to happen. You know, just, just what the trip turned into and what it became, you know, day by day by day. It's just astounding to think about. And, you know, pictures and videos can only get you so far when it comes to this kind of stuff. And I think the number one thing that I realized is that you know, St. Croix, it's not just a pretty place. It's not just a place with beautiful beaches and the downtown scenery. Like, there's so much culture and environment and just, like, atmosphere to it. And just the stories there are absolutely unbelievable. I can without a doubt say that this was a trip that I will never forget. But there's just one last thing I need to do.
my name is Shelby Dorsho, and this was the St. Croix Chronicles.